Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today we're talking about queen walks, specifically at Town Hall 9, but you can apply this stuff to other Town Hall levels as well. Uh, the situation is basically this. You have an area of the base you identified is a good place to queen walk, good defensive value, you can take it out uh, without having to invest too many rages or using the queen's ability to keep her up. So it's a good trade. The question is, should your queen meet up with the kill squad and enter the base with them? Or should she diverge and go her own direction and should you enter the kill squad in a separate part of the base? That's gonna be the main thing we're looking at in this video. I'll go ahead and start the first attack. We have quite a few to take a look at, but um, the first thing you wanna do when a queen walk is Try to find great value, places where you can get um, good value, the king in this example, with some point defense, things that would otherwise be tricky for your hogs or your other troops in the attack, to get it taken out but without having to invest uh, a rage or the ability if you can help it. Some places you do want to invest a rage if you can get especially good value, but typically trades like these with the king, with single point defenses as you move along, is are very good trades to have. Wizard towers especially, because they can be pretty tough on hogs, they're high HP, um, and they, um, they do splash damage so your hogs will get hurt if they're not under a heal. Those are good to take out in a queen walk as well because they don't do much to your queen being a splash damage, not doing as much overall damage uh, as the point defense do. This one you can see queen meets up with the kill squad. And the main thing that should have you decide, do I want my queen to meet up with the kill squad, is you need to identify, is there a good end game path for the queen to take? Is there a good route she can take for the remainder of the attack, a good direction she can walk around the base where she can continue her queen walk without going down? If she's gonna go down, send her in with the kill squad in most cases. Now, you can see in this one, the healers start to get shot down, um, but there is value. Uh, this is kind of a, a bad example in some regard, but there is very good value in sending in your queen with the kill squad because not only does she help take out defenses and CC troops, uh, she also, the healers can peel off and start healing your golem, your bowlers, your king. So the healers can get you some great value, especially if they share in the rage spell that you bring for that kill squad. So in this case, the healers do get shot down. You gotta be very, very careful of air defenses in both situations, whether you decide to have your queen go into the base, you gotta be careful, because if there's a bunch of air defenses where you enter, the healers might get shot down, making the, the investment of that not worth it, especially if you're doing a small queen walk to lead into your entry. Um, but also, if you're going to have your queen walk around the base, the alternative, and not be part of your kill squad, you got to be sure that the, the healers aren't going to get shot down right away by an air defense that's too far away for your queen to reach. We talk about defensively putting those air defenses in uh, certain locations where the queen just can't reach them and the healers will start getting shot down as the queen cuts around on a queen walk. That's a good defensive strategy and you got to be aware of that. As the attacker so let's move on and take a look at another base here uh, number 31 we're going to show uh, five attacks today this next one by monty g um he's gonna go ahead and start a queen walk right by the uh the middle section of the base next to the expo there and you can see a wizard down for funneling this was a very nice queen walk gets good value i believe he does rage her up if i'm not mistaken here maybe he doesn't actually We'll see as she steps up. But notice how he's doing the queen walk on the side of the base where there's no air defenses. That means he doesn't have to worry about his queen cutting around. He actually uses the ability, which is a good option sometimes because the rage is often better used when it can affect multiple things, especially if your queen's meeting up with your kill squad. You might be better off using the ability if it's needed at some point instead of a rage. That way the rage can be used on the entire mass of troops, in this case three golems. Um, it's almost exclusively a kill squad based attack, only six hogs for the back end. But it's very nice how everything meets up because the healers are going to start healing stuff up. He doesn't even bring a heal spell because uh, the healers in that rage can do a very nice job. Now a few seeking air mines do pop up, but besides that the healers taking care of the golems, they'll often lock onto the golems because they have the most uh, troop space, but they can help the king out there as well. You can see keeping the king alive while those two hogs come in and uh, take out the expo that's being tanked. So very nice value there. They'll get the king pretty much back up to full health. So that's a great benefit is as those healers come in, 
they'll often peel off and start targeting your um, your kill squad troops. Now, like I said, if there's a bunch of air defenses, you got to be careful. Um, oftentimes, they can go down quick enough, but if you're coming at a weird angle and the air defense isn't one of the immediate buildings that's going to go down to the kill squad, they can take out, as you guys saw in that first attack, the majority of the healers. So you got to be careful because if you're doing a short queen walk, it's often better off to not even do a queen walk at all if the healers aren't going to last beyond just the very first uh, little queen walk part. They're not actually going to go into the base and get you any value. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. A few attacks because I just love showing our bases as well. Um, Got to find the attacks though, whichever side they appear on. Um, this next one actually had a few ice wizards um, or one ice wizard, which is a little nostalgic. I, I guess he kind of kept them in his camps. I, I think they were gone by the time... Uh, this this war happened a few days ago um just kept one in his camp i guess so anyway uh this next attack here the queen is actually going to diverge and go around the base i don't think it was intentional but assuming it it was intentional it actually was good um so i guess he got lucky in a sense because it was better that the queen did not meet up with the kill squad now we'll pause for a second you can see at the top of the base which is where he's trying to funnel his queen it still would be favorable because um, there's no air defenses. It's a, a place where, especially without a heal spell, the healers are going to get some good value. They'll keep the kill squad healed up um, if there's giant bombs and stuff in this expo compartment. So there is cause to bring the queen up. It's not a bad plan, but she gets almost equally, if not better, value by going the other way around the base, separate from the kill squad. The reason being, um, there's not enough point defense to overwhelm her and that's what I was trying to stress when you're deciding whether to have the queen diverge or meet up with your kill squad you got to ask yourself is she going to survive if she doesn't meet up with the kill squad because it's very safe to have her meet up with it she sits back behind the golems and then the queen's the queen um, she does her thing but if you have her go alone you have to ensure there's not going to be um, too much point defense or other things that can take her down as well as the air defenses aren't going to shoot down the healers now looking at her path around the long side of the base here three point defense that we know she can get this one air defense is suspect because it will take out the healers but by the time it takes out the healers she's going to already have gotten all of that probably plus this wizard tower so it's a very good value these are defenses that otherwise can't be gotten by the kill squad the hogs are coming in on this side so it's defenses that would be difficult to deal with um otherwise if everything was going in the top of the base so i think it was good value here also the bowlers don't hit any giant bombs so the healing wasn't really needed as much um for that top group up there so it goes ahead and uses the rage up there the queen meanwhile gonna get very nice value and it's very um effective to have a queen alive at the end of the attack now especially with healers on her now that air defense is not going to actually shoot down the healers really because the bowlers get so far into the base it was a great kill squad entry they're going to take out that air defense um so having a healthy queen with a few healers on her not doesn't even have to be all four or all five just like two or three that's going to be very valuable at the end of the attack if there's a few point defense that happen to still be up or a few wizard towers, just things that your hogs don't otherwise get. She's a great cleanup asset so you don't run out of time. So those are some benefits to having your queen separate. You know the healers are going to stay on her and if the the end game pathing for your queen, talking about the, uh, the route she's going to take around the base, if it's not going to take her down, if there's not a lot of expos and point defense that's at that magical four tile distance from the wall that can hurt her but she can't shoot it, and there's not the air defenses to shoot down the healers, then you can get some very good value and typically it's worth it to have your queen go separately from your kill squad. Um, now let's move on to a few more attacks here. This next one is, I forget if the queen meets up or she diverges, I guess we'll see in just a moment here. Uh, fast forward, drops her over on the right side there. Actually kind of a similar base in a sense to the last one we just saw. Um, yeah, it seems very similar. Like it's a different base for sure, but it has some similar aspects of, of it. So that's interesting. Um, so the queen's going to start up top. Uh, she's going to engage the king. Notice how she hasn't really gotten a whole lot of value and he's already dropping that golem. Now you might think it's a waste of those healers, especially because he's going to have to rage her up, but she's doing a few things. She's creating a difficult funnel that would otherwise be very hard to make. And she's not. nothing's really being wasted. 
the four healers, especially with no air defenses in the area really, they're going to get some good value healing stuff up. So you don't think of it as a waste if you do a short queen walk, just, you know, a few buildings, a funnel, the defensive king. That's all good stuff. Don't think of it as a waste if the queen walk doesn't take out a big part of the base. Oftentimes, that's the best type of queen walk is to have your queen just take out a little bit and then meet up with everything else. Because that way, you st you know that you're not going to have to invest that much in your queen walk. It's just going to be very short. The time's not going to be too difficult, so you'll have plenty of time for the attack. And then those four healers will get some great value um, as they move into the base, assuming there's no air defenses right there, to shoot them down. So they, they, they did a great job keeping that golem up. Otherwise, it would have exploded a long time ago. It still has a little bit of health. It's tanking a bomb tower and two cannons inside the middle of the base there. So some great value. It helps out those hogs if you can get farther into the base and you can do so if you have those healers helping out your kill squad so i hope you guys are kind of seeing the benefit to both and when you want to um, have your queen walk meet up and when you want to have it go its own way um, so it's just a matter of, of value and i guess the default should be have the queen walk go its own way but if it's going to be difficult, which often it is, there's too much point defense, you can't see the value, you can't see the possibility of your queen staying up. If you do that, then you want to have her meet up with the kill squad. Uh, if you can, if you can, can find a good location um, and she can create one side of the funnel for your kill squad entry, which is very important if you're using bowlers because they often are difficult to funnel. Shout out to my bowler funneling video, which I think is often appears on videos as an ad. Um, my own videos that is it's one of those little cards on the bottom so check that out it's an old video but it still applies just as well as it ever has to bowler funneling I have a guide on that so check that out if you haven't already okay one more um, from a more recent war here number 20 this one I believe was a very nice attack uh, by Teddy um, he, this this queen walk was nice. It's one of those ones that diverges, and we'll talk about uh, why it was a good choice here. So I uh, will drop her right here in the corner. This is a great place to get value from a queen walk because the point defense are all accessible, and it's not going to overwhelm her. The expo doesn't lock on until she's already starting to take stuff out. I love the baby dragon to tank there. Um, create the funnel, also tank one point defense so he doesn't even have to use a rage or anything. Then these two balloons were perfect. I don't even think he planned to get that expo taken out, but they'll cut across for that expo. Nothing can even target them, so they take out that expo as well. Um, that's incredible value right there. And the queen hasn't used a rage, and that's one of the great things about a queen walk is you don't lose anything during it. Now, the kill squad's going in up top. It's a good place to get value because there's probably a few springs up there by the air defenses. There's wizard towers. There's the king. All difficult things. You want your hogs taking out cannons, archer towers, Tesla, stuff that's lower in HP. HP. And also, um, like I said, the wizard towers, if you don't have a heal, are very difficult for hogs to go through because they're high HP and they do that splash damage. Now, one thing you'll notice is the end game for the queen is very nice. No air defenses to cut off her healers, and just these two point defense which she'll encounter one at a time. Unfortunately, that lava hound gets on the queen. A quick note about lava hounds. A lot of you guys say that you don't see them much in the CC, so this it shouldn't be much of a, of a point to make. But if you do see Lava Hounds in the CC, it's a good reason to have your queen uh, walk around and not meet up with the kill squad, because then you can have um, your bowler, golem, king kill squad, which nothing in there can target the hound. You can have that um, pull the Lava Hound and distract it while the queen goes around and does her thing without having to worry about the hound. So if you do see it, that's a good reason to do this type of queen walk that diverges from the kill squad. Um, we, we've seen attacks, like I think the first one or the second one, where the queen does go in and, and encounters the lava hound. It's not a deal breaker, but it's just another reason to do this type of queen walk because you can avoid that lava hound. So that being said, it gets some great value here. The kill squad goes pretty much north to south. You can see the king is at the bottom of the base. He started all the way at the top there, sends in these hogs, has the heal spell, and they will hit quite a few springs, but they'll take that out. And like I said, it's just so valuable having a queen at, um, up at the end of the attack with the healers on her. They actually peel off and get the king. Um, but regardless, having the queen and having those healers is a great end game thing to have. 
especially at Town Hall 9 when you don't have to worry about Infernos because uh, oftentimes we didn't see it much in this but oftentimes the kill squad the hogs won't quite take out the base there'll still be a few uh, defenses left but if the queen is still up with her healers you can get some great value um, and you can take out the rest of the base just with that now we didn't talk very much about queen charges that's a totally different thing if you're going to wall break the queen into the base and have her um, be on her own but be entering the base to get value inside that's more complicated more complex takes more skill and practice so that's a separate video topic possibly but this is a thing that anyone can use who has like a level 20 queen even level 15 and above just make your queen walks shorter if they are going to meet up with the kill squad because time becomes an issue but as long as you have max healers the queen level isn't that important i'd say level 15 and above preferably level 20 and above will work and uh, you can get some great value doing the two different types of queen walks I described here. A good staple for Town Hall 9. So thanks for watching this video. Hope it helped, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bisectatron out.